Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning as we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter and the ascension of our Lord. Um, we'll see how this works because I can't see anything except for the trees on the other side of the uh, highway here. There's a little bright up here. so. But you can follow along on the screen or on page 77 in the front of your hymnal. Well, let us gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. So that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Now, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on you the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I invite you to please rise for opening hymn 157, verses 1 through 3.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace from above, and for sorry, for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We'll continue with the hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. That is bright. Um, the first reading this morning is found in Acts chapter 1. Today's reading is part of the introduction to the narrative of the outpouring of the Spirit on Pentecost. These verses tell of the risen Lord's conversation with his disciples on the eve of his ascension, in which he promises that he will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> when the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the time or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. <clears throat> Excuse me. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while he was going... And they were gazing up towards heaven. Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into the heavens. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they entered the city, they went to the <clears throat> room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. 
All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends the reading. We'll now read responsibly <clears throat> Psalm 68. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. And exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am his name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father of orphans, defender of widows. Give us all <laughs> O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, you sent a bountiful rain, O oh God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Sing, O God, O kingdom of the earth, sing praises to the Lord. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. The second reading this morning is from 1 Peter. Our faith in Christ does not make us immune from the scorn of others. Nevertheless, we are to resist the designs of evil when we experience disparagement from others because we trust God's grace will strengthen and guide us. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Steadfast is your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Please rise. Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Again, on the, on the night before his crucifixion, Jesus prays to his heavenly Father, asking that those who, are, those who continue his work in this world will live in unity. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that your Son may, be glor may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you give given to him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. 
I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave to me. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave to me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, but they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those who you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them, and I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, holy, coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. The Gospel of our Lord. I'll invite the kids to come forward. I'm going to take you guys up this way. Yeah, we don't go up here very often, do we? Bless you. It's a good place to get a blessing. You can spread out if you want. So how many of you have looked at the picture here? So what do you think it means? What, what? Where are the people? Yeah, he's blessing the people. When he rose from the dead? Yeah, this is actually just after he rose from the dead. It is after Jesus rose from the dead in our Acts lesson today. He's spent his time with the disciples, eating and fishing and teaching them before he went away. And after 40 days, they took him up to a mountaintop, Mount of Olives, and he was teaching them, telling them the Holy Spirit was going to come to them. And then, as he was talking, he began to rise off the ground. And he rose and rose until the clouds covered him up and the disciples couldn't see him anymore. And suddenly, two men in white robes, who we assume are angels, told them, why are you standing here? He's not here anymore. Go, do something. Your parents ever tell you to go and do something? Yes. Yeah. You know, go and do something. Tell everybody about what Jesus has done. And as we see Jesus rise, the two angels told us that in the end of time, that when Jesus comes, we'll see him coming out of heaven again. Now, right now, we usually don't go outside and look up to the clouds and see if Jesus is coming. But we trust when the time is right, we will see him. But this is a picture of the ascension. When Jesus went up to the Father... And you've heard us um, in our confession, the Apostles' Creed, saying he's seated at the right hand of God. So we believe he's no longer walking with us here on earth, but he's risen up into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. You ever thought about that? Yeah. Anybody here ever risen off the ground? No. No? (laughs) Really? Oh, I still remember in kindergarten, I get to go to... Bible camp in Okoboji and we had a trampoline. Not quite the same thing, but I got off the ground. You know, but here Jesus is rising to go with God so he can watch over us from heaven. So when you think of that picture, think about Jesus going to watch over us. Think you can do that? Okay, well, let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you go to watch over us. Guide us this day and always with your Holy Spirit so we may be in you as you are in us. Amen. Well, thank you for coming up. So those of you who have been to church here forever and ever, How often do you look at the picture and think about that? Yeah. I know I go in Sunday out and Sunday in and go, man, I can't wait till Ascension Day so I can talk about that. (laughs) 
Oh, yeah. But here in our first reading, Jesus has spent time with them. And now he's teaching them and telling them that he has to go. Yeah, put my notes in the wrong place. That he has to go, but he's sending someone to be with us, to give us authority. And the disciples are sitting there watching him as he goes up. I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you're sitting there and you're going, this is over, but I can't go yet. You know, you finish a good movie and you just got to sit there. Or you go to the high school play and it's so good, you just got to sit there and watch the kids as they clean up. You know, or you finish a Christmas dinner or opening Christmas presents and you get to see your family all there. And you just want to stay in that moment. The disciples are there, just sitting in that moment. And suddenly two men in white robes show up and ask what they're doing there. Why are they still looking up towards heaven? And they tell him he is gone. He's no longer here, but he will return. That's a large part of our hope and faith, that this Christ who lived among us, taught among us, even died and rose among us, is now in heaven with his full authority watching over us, sending the Holy Spirit to guide us. And he sends us. Always think about this. And the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. How often do you think that you are a witness to what Christ has done here in this place? And that witness is not just here in Walnut Grove, Westbrook area. It extends throughout the entire state and all through the country and all through the world. What we do here is witness to the world that Christ is here, that God's glory has come among us. Or as St. Peter tells us in his reading, that this God has called you to his eternal glory in Christ. He himself restores, supports, strengthens, and establishes you. God has called us, and so we are sent to call others. You know, one of the stories I was reading was talking about their childhood and how they'd be called home for dinner. And I was thinking about my childhood when I was in older elementary school. During the summer, it'd be like Lord of the Flies. All the boys would be out there doing something, and then we'd hear the noon whistle go off. And that, of course, meant go home for lunch. We'd finish lunch. We'd go back out, be all again, Lord of the Flies. Then the six o'clock whistle would go off. We'd have to go home for supper, finish eating, and we'd go out again. And the nine o'clock whistle would go off. And we knew it was then that the cops wanted us off the street. So we went home. It was getting dark. But we heard that whistle and knew that was a call to go home. We knew that was call for us. And Peter is reminding us that in our lives, in the joys and the sufferings, in the difficulties of following God, of living the life that we think he wants us to live, God is still calling out to us. Because I'm pretty sure if I asked a raise of hand, how many out here are perfect Christians? Yeah. And then if I changed that up, I'd ask how many of you are saints? How many would raise your hand? Oh, I gotta go back to that, don't I? We were both saint and sinner at the same time. 
We are both glorified and sinful at the same time. We are still suffering with trying to live up to what God wants us to be. But at the same time, we are fully forgiven. We are fully restored. We are fully established here in this place as a witness to what God is doing. As that siren would call us home, we hear the word of God. We hear our brothers and sisters in Christ calling us, reminding us that we are his, living in his glory. So as Jesus has risen off into heaven, he sends us out into the world. I'm always amazed with all the ways that we witness to the world. I have to admit, I haven't been to many places where people from around the world want to come and see where you live. You know, I still remember learning that we had a TV station from Japan doing an interview here and thinking, why? You know? But we have people from all over the world coming here, and they see this community that we have here. They see that something is happening here. Now, we may not be posting pictures of Jesus everywhere, but they see that something is happening here. They see that we, the way we gather as community to do things, the way we talk to one another, greet one another, or even the strange way that you wa wave at everyone you meet, is a witness to the world that Christ is here being glorified in us. I don't know if you've thought about the power of that witness. The way we show love towards one another is a way that we proclaim the glory of Christ to the world without having to fly across the country or the world. But we do also send our glory throughout the world. I think in the winter and Christmas time, we do our offering to send food and things to help people raise their own food around the world. Missionaries take what we have given and share it with people throughout the world so that they may know from here God's grace is going. And I think about how we proclaim God's grace here. We, try to, we support the local school, the libraries. We support the local community in many ways. We support our Bible camps support other ministries in the area. We are witnesses here, and we are called by God to continue being witnesses here and throughout the world. So as we seek to live that call, knowing that we aren't perfect, that we are sinners, but we are also the saints that God has called to be as witnesses here and now, not only to the ends of the earth, but the ends of time, now and forever. So let us be his witnesses. Amen. We will continue with verses 1, 2, and 5 of hymn 158. Alleluia, sing to Jesus.
realized I needed to apologize to everybody on Facebook. I thought I turned off my microphone during the song. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I got it. Oh, God. <laughs> I'd hate to destroy the internet. <laughs> but I'll invite you to please rise and let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll now receive the offering. Let us pray. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and unite us with the planet and one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love for the sake of the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your Lord, your spirit hovered over the waters in creation. And so your spirit hovers all over, over all that you have made. Bless the water that sustains the planet. Grant wisdom to those to use it wisely. And be with farmers and those who are raising animals in this sp spring planting and calving season. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy Lord, you empower people with the fire of your Holy Spirit. Challenge activists and organizers, teachers, politicians, and all in leadership to speak a message of peace and justice. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy and Lord, you care for all your children. Show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles, refugees, or prisoners. Break the chains of all those held fast in oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness. We especially pray for Arlen, Janice, Faye, Darla, Randy, Karen, Alan, Gary, Megan, Sharon, Helen, Lorelai, Ricky, Don, Judy, Roger, Linda, Cheryl, Ricky, Mary, Brad, Misty, Melanie, Marcy, Harlan, and Brianna, and Thea, and all those we name in our hearts. We also pray for all those who are grieving this morning. Give them your strength and peace. We especially pray for the family and friends of Cheryl Campbell and Jean Gullickson-Strong. Hear us, O oh God. 
Lord, we give you thanks that, that we serve as your body in the world. Steward your abundant gifts. Guide this congregation's leaders to seek your will. Pray for all who are here. We pray for all who are here. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to Almighty and Eternal God through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now let us pray as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A few announcements. Our newsletters articles are due tomorrow, so if you have anything for the newsletter, please send it in. Um, Wednesday, we'll have our Bible study at English at 9 o'clock, also live stream then, too, on Facebook. Um, and it will also be at Country View at 1 p.m. Um, we are at, um, and then there'll be a celebration of life for Gene Strong here at St. Olaf at 4 p.m. And then next Sunday, we begin our summer schedule. We'll be doing um, two services each Sunday in the parish. So next week, we'll have worship at 9 o'clock at English and 9 o'clock at Our Saviors. And so keep that in mind. Um, let's see here. And there's a come and go baby shower for Carlin Littman at the Westbrook Community Center on the 10th. Um, let's see. Yep, we have Senior Sunday. This, yeah, I, I'm assuming you're graduating. Okay, so we have Senior Sunday this week, or Senior Sunday today, or we'll be recognizing our senior today. And so. Join us for coffee downstairs. Okay. Any other announcements? Oh, one other announcement. If anybody would like to go to a really awesome party in St. Peter on the 9th and 10th of June, we'll have our Senate Assembly. Um, let me know, and we can get you signed up for that. It's a lot of fun, a lot of raucousness. Uh, yes. A lot of voting and a lot of listening to speeches, but it's fun to meet people and have coffee. Okay, I'll invite you to please rise for the blessing. The God of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live as a new creation. Amen. We continue with hymn 260, On Our Way Rejoicing.
Let us go in peace to serve the risen one. We will. Thanks be to God.